Hello again, everyone. We've been talking about uh, inner work and its relationship to outer work in nonviolence. Uh, I uh, have some reassurances that I offer in the book that when we do not act out of anger, we are not necessarily repressing that anger. I want to just stick with that a second longer because I think that's one of the most important uh, dynamics in uh, nonviolent action any kind of social change action, uh, often these actions come from a feeling of love, but they often come from a feeling of offended love, uh, a feeling that something is terribly wrong and we have to get it right, and we face a very critical juncture at that point. Are we going to act out of anger as anger, or are we going to look for a creative expression of that anger? So. Uh, there's an old uh, African-American spiritual called The Way Out of No Way, and I use that phrase to describe the creativity of nonviolent acting and nonviolent states of mind, that they really are a perfectly safe, to say the least, a perfectly safe outlet for feel destructive feelings like anger and fear. But we have to train ourselves for those energies to go through that outlet. And uh, we talked earlier about an experiment that was done in schools that showed that children who were trained to be more cooperative were super cooperative after they had been frustrated, showing that negative energies can come up, but they can be trained to go in a constructive channel. So we're talking about practicing how we do that individually and how to create a constructive culture to help society do that in general. And uh, recently, there was a very poignant episode in Beirut, Lebanon, where a man named Adel Termos uh, saw a suicide bomber. He was about to blow up his vest. He had his little daughter with him. Adel Termos did. He threw himself on that bomber to take the impact of the explosion himself. And of course, it uh, destroyed him, his body. He died. And he saved his daughter and probably dozens, maybe a hundred other people. And the journalists commenting on this said that this will never understand this. This is completely against human nature. The point that I'm leading up to is, no, this is another capacity within human nature. And just as we have an instinct for self-preservation, which I'm sure he had at that moment, we have an instinct for self-sacrifice. And it's on that second instinct that we have to draw sometimes when things get to that end stage and we have to make a sacrifice for nonviolence. So I look forward to a day when a journalist will understand that this was a very deep capacity in human nature and uh, rewarded as such. So we were talking about, uh, did uh, Gandhi meditate? And on page 79, I have an interesting anecdote about how he visits uh, an ashram spiritual community. And uh, at the end of the day, when he leaves, the head of the ashram, the preceptor, said, today we've been visited by a real yogi. And they say, oh, how did you know that? And they think he's going to say, well, he was, had this aura, or his feet were several inches off the ground or something like that. But he said, no, did you notice the way he looked at everything? He said the other people who were with him were like they had five or six pairs of eyes, were all over the place. Uh, but he had give, com gave complete one-pointed attention to everything he did. And it's that one-pointed attention that gives quality to everything. And this is how meditation figures in to the preparation for nonviolence. Because in meditation, you eventually develop a feeling for where you are grounded and where you're distracted, where you're being pulled off that grounding. And it was an amazing discovery that I eventually made. Actually, a friend of mine had to point it out to me that when I'm getting angry, when I'm getting afraid, it is a distraction. It's a distraction from my grounded state. So the practice that I do in meditation of not going with the distraction, 
coming back to my groundedness, is precisely the practice that I need for acting nonviolently in whatever situation comes up or whatever situation I create in order to bring about social change. So as to the question, did Gandhi meditate? I think he must have. There is a photograph of him very deep in meditation. Uh, Sri Ishran, my teacher, saw him at a prayer meeting and you know, he called it prayer and there was sound going on. People were reciting scriptures, but he must have had this innate instinct to draw himself very, very deep into the ground of his being. And we will remember his, uh, I think, his most famous quote, the kind of meta quote that uh, underlies all the other quotes, which is where he says, I do not have the shadow of a doubt that any human being, man or woman, can do what I have done. So let's explore that a little bit in our next time. Till then, uh, good luck. Hope you enjoy your reading of Search for a Nonviolent Future, and I'll be back with you shortly.